Hello, I'm Stefan Grieber, the project leader for LexD, and in this video, we're going to be talking about network zones. Network zones in LexD is effectively DNS, um, specifically LexD itself acting as a authoritative DNS server to expose records, both forward and reverse, for instances and internal, um, internal services that it's operating. This is different from what many would, would think about LexD DNS, which is the basic DNS support uh, inside of DNS mask, which is run by default with LexD. Um, that built-in DNS uh, feature in DNS mask lets you do things like resolving another container uh, within the network by doing like container name dot LexD by default and having that resolve. Um, that's provided as a, as a nice facility by DNS mask, but it's quite different from what network zones are trying to do. What you can do with network zones instead is have an experience that's much closer to a public cloud where each instance um, has an IP address. Well, in, in this case, can have both IPv4 and IPv6 IP addresses with associated DNS record that resolves to both of those addresses and with existing uh, IPv4 and IPv6 reverse records. And then if those zones are public, then you can expose those to the public DNS on the internet and everything will feel very much like a public cloud. Now, for this to work, it's not all done by LexD. It requires a few a few side services effectively. So the first thing is you need to operate a DNS server that will transfer the zone data from LexD regularly and then distribute it externally to normal uh, normal machines making requests. Uh, so the intent with, with something like this is that you actually don't use LexD's uh, built-in DNS mask DNS feature for your instances. You would effectively have a authoritative DNS server that downloads the zones from LexD that then publishes those normally um, over the internet. And you even your own local inst instances would go through a normal DNS resolver that then accesses uh, those zones. The advantage being that the zones are also published to the entirety of the internet, uh, can contain extra records, and really, really feel like the real deal instead of just like a, a very local specific kind of um, DNS resolver as you get by default. So here I've got the documentation open, uh, which goes kind of over some of that, the, the general concepts of, of what this is about, uh, shows the default records you would get inside of a network zone on the next day also how to turn on the, the built-in DNS server, how to create zones, some of the zone configuration, and then how to define custom records um, within the zones. As I mentioned, by default, uh, LexD will generate records for, for some of its services, um, as well as instances. So that's kind of what we can see here. Here you'd have an instance called foo that's got the record, an IPv4 record. Uh, and then we've got things like a plink. Um, so downstream networks would have a, have a record, uh, another instance here and the network, like in this case, another network that's dangling off of that network also has its own, its own record. So that's generated dynamically by LexD and then the upstream DNS server will just scrape the zone regularly and update it. All right, so let's take a look at how that actually works. So here I'm just on my local machine. I've got a number of containers running. To just show you kind of the default state of things, if I go into that speed test container, we can see that it's got a domain set for LexD by default. And that lets it uh, resolve things like lexd.build.lexd, and this will resolve. So that's the default, that's what DNS mask does. There's no network zone or nothing can I in place at this point. Um, that's just kind of what you get out of the box. Network-wise, I've got two networks. All of the instances you saw so far are all on that LexDBR0 network. And I'll keep that one untouched because that's on my own stuff. And for this demo, I'm going to use a separate network. So I've got another network here called DemoBR0, which is just your completely standard IPv4, IPv6 default network in LexD. There's nothing special going on. Now, what we want to do is create some zones and associate them with that network. Uh, and then spawn instances on it. So let's start by creating a zone. We can list the zones with next network zone list. There's none. So we'll create a new one called demo.example.net. OK. 
Okay. And then we need the fun part, which is creating the reverse um, zones. For anyone who ever dealt with DNS, um, they'll know that this is always a bit weird. Um, so the IPv4 is not too bad. It's just the IPv4 backwards uh, dot in adder dot arpa. That's fine. The IPv6, this one is a massive pain in the ass to, to do properly. <laughs> so um, the way I usually do it is that I just query uh, an IP address in it, and then you can get, you can do create and you need to figure out where your IPv6 address ends. In this case, the address we can see ends with B9FF. So the last character that I care about is going to be an F. It's going to then be followed by a bunch of zeros. So that's the zone. Um, there's also tools that can figure out the reverse zone for you uh, to, to make it maybe a bit more, a bit simpler to handle. Anyway, so now I've got three zones. Uh, oops, zone list. There we go. I've got my forward zone and the two reverse zone for the CPV4 and the IPv6. Now I need to I need to actually attach them to the network they belong to. So I can do that with Flexi Network Set. And I'm using demo BR0 in this case, and it's going to be dns.zone.forward. And the forward zone is demo example net. And then reverse, and I've got IPv4. So this one. And IPv6, which is that one. Okay, so now LexD is effectively configured, but what we don't have right now is a DNS server to actually fetch those zones for us. So I'm going to be doing that by launching a LexD container. I'm going to use an Ubuntu 22.04 image, call the container NS1, and place it on the same network we're serving, so MOBR0 in this case. This is somewhat unusual. Usually you're going to have your DNS servers kind of outside of your XD infrastructure somewhere or use an external provider to handle that. Uh, but in this case, I'm just running it as a container directly on it. Then you get a shell inside that. And the DNS server I'm going to be using today is called NSD, which is a very simple, high performance, authoritative DNS server. Um, I need some of the tools from for DNS queries and debugging. So I'm getting them from those two packages. And there we go, installing those packages. All right, um, now what I need to do is some amount of configuration. The first thing we need to do is actually have LexD listen for DNS traffic. So um, if we look at the network list, we see the gateway address here. I'm going to be listening on that one in this case. So core DNS address is the config key for the DNS server, then 48.79.1, and going to make it listen on port 8.8.5.3 so it doesn't conflict with any other DNS server I might have locally. Do that, and now we've got the DNS server running. What needs, that's the built-in, the LXD built-in DNS server, so now we need to have our external DNS server actually fetch stuff from it. The way we do that is going back in the container, and can I be configuring NSD? So, so I'm going to create the file called server.conf. And the first thing we need to do is actually tell NSD to listen on the specific address. In this case, the IPv4 address of the container it's running in. I'm doing that because otherwise it's going to, again, conflict this time with the built-in uh, DNS server that comes with Ubuntu. Um, so by making it listen on that public address, we avoid, we avoid that problem. Then we need to define the zones um, that we want to download from next day. So one of them is demo example net. And then we need to, uh, to request a transfer using an AXFR request from the LexD server. So that's not, and the port is 8853. And we're not using any authentication keys in this case. I'm gonna just copy paste the other two to make things a bit faster. There we go. Then save that. And this container is effectively ready to go. The one, there's like just a couple of settings missing on our zone still. Um, so I can already restart the DNS server here. But um, 
we need to configure a few more things. So what I need to do is set a couple of config keys on each of the zones. So we can look at what, at what it's like right now. There we go. No config, just the domain, that's it. Okay. Um, the first thing to set is to actually tell it that it, the zone is going to be transferred and from where. That's a basic kind of security that just uses the IP address. Uh, so I'm going to define a peer, uh, call the peer minus one, and then set its address to 1048.79.216. Okay. And the other thing that we want to do is in the zone itself, um, there needs to be a record or multiple records telling uh, any client what DNS server is actually serving those zones. Uh, so we, there needs to be a name, otherwise the zone is not valid. In this case, um, the the record for the DNS server is going to serve the zone is NS1, and it's actually running on that same network. So it's ns1.demo.example.net in this case. Setting this. And now we need to repeat that for the other two zones and uh, just do a zone list to get their names okay so ipv4 okay and then let's do the ipv6 one with first this one and then with now ah. okay so now we're done here um we can just make sure they're all configured properly with a network zone show you can see that all three of them have the exact same configuration which will allow that uh, ns1 container to download the zone all right so let's go back into ns1 and now that we're here, we can do an NSD control transfer. So it synchronizes all the zones. If we look at the journal output, it should actually show that I succeeded and that all the zones have been synchronized. The result of that is if we, again, need the IP address of that instance, and now we query, say, NS1 demo example net in the zone. That works. So now we've got DNS records for the forward record, uh, for the IPv4 record, and for the IPv6 record here. And we can check that our reverse zones are also functional by looking for a reverse DNS record. And that all works. The other thing we can do um, to just make sure that everything works as expected is do uh, is directly ask LexD for the zone from the NS1 container. So effectively doing the same thing that that NSG server is doing just to see what's in there. So we can do that with the dig tool, um, pointing it at LexD, specifying the port, 853, asking for a zone transfer, and then for the zone we want to transfer. And here we can see what LexD actually generated for the zone. So we can see that we have a record for NS1 uh, as we've seen above, but there's also a network for the gateway itself. So you can see demo br0.gateway.demo.example.net. Um, and we can make sure this actually works by just querying that very record. And that's working just fine. So that's pretty much the concept. Now we've got those three zones transferred to that uh, NSD server running in that NS1 container. And if those were actually public, um, public zones, you would then go uh, and either, well, if if they're top level zones, you'd go straight to your registrar and then change the DNS, rec the um, your registrar's DNS server fields to point your DNS server, and then those zones would just work. Uh, or if they are like um, a subset of another zone, then you'd put an NS record in the parent zone that points to your, to your DNS server here, and that will work just fine. Now, let's take a look at the custom records. Now, there is a, so there's a command called Lexi Network Zone Record that is to create those. Um, what can we add? Um, well, let's create a record uh, for, I can see the syntax here. So in the zone demo.example.net, we're going to be creating a record called, let's call that DNS. 
um, like that. And then the record itself has uh, entries. So record entry add to demo demo example.net DNS and we want to add an entry that's gonna be a C name to NS1. Okay. Uh, now if we go look at the zone demo example.net and do a record list. Okay, so this one is present. We can see that DNS is there and points to NS1. Now the, the result of that is if we go here and do the zone transfer again to see what it generated this time. Um, that is feigning. That's interesting. Um, let's see. Record edit. Uh, um, yeah, we got edit might work. Demo example. Um, and then the record is NS. Okay, what am I doing here? The zone is demo example. The record is the uh, DNS. There we go. Okay, uh, let's just make turn that into an absolute record. So NS one day is multiple net. Okay. See if that makes it happy. There we go. Okay, so now we can see here that we do have a record for DNS demo example.net, which is the same name to NS1 demo example.net. Uh, eventually, NSD is going to refresh the zones. There's a um, an expiry that's pretty short to make it refresh um, after just a few minutes, but you can also always force a transfer. And the result here is that if we do now demo example net uh, against our local DNS server, which I forgot the address for again. Um, where is that? Come on. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this one. Okay. So if we query DNS demo example net against that server, we can see that it properly returns that this is an alias for NS1 demo example net and then has the shows the full record for NS1. Similarly, if we launch a new instance, um, call it blah on that network. Uh, what did that typo this time? Oops, that project is network network demo we are zero. There we go. And go back and look at the zone. Then we will see that blah is now in there. Similarly, after a few seconds, the zone would fix itself. Um, but we can also refresh it forcefully. And here it is. So that's that's pretty much the, the network zone feature inside of LexD. Um, that really lets you define typically public zones uh, directly inside, um, inside of LexD, tie them to networks, and then LexD will generate their content you can extend that default content using those extra records and then transfer the zone to a full-fledged DNS server, something like NSD, Bind9, or any of the others. And then those can serve your zone as they would any other. Maybe one thing that's worth mentioning, uh, I mean, in this case, it's going to be kind of interesting because it will effectively empty the entire zone. Um, but if you've got a network like this one uh, that uses NAT, and you don't want to have records for anything, um, for anything that's that's private. So any of those subnets that are not publicly accessible, there is a config option that you can set on the zone. So again, if we go look at our zone uh, demo example net, it's, it's gonna print config. There is a config key here that can be set for network .nat equals false. And by setting that, now any records that's uh, coming from a network uh, from a subnet that's knotted will disappear. So if we look at the zone that effectively emptied it completely, except for the this custom record that we've got in the zone, which effectively also turned that record invalid because the target no longer exists. Um, that's effectively how that works. Now, say we edit our network 
and say that the IPv6 subnet is actually not private, it is a publicly accessible subnet. Then looking at the zone again, um, I did not notice my change, that is interesting. Uh, oh, uh, not, did I mess that up? False. Okay, let's try that. There we go. Um, so now it still has a setting that hides anything that's knotted, but because IPv6 is no longer knotted, then all the IPv6 records have not showed up. Um, that's actually a pretty common setup as it's pretty rare for someone to run an entire network on publicly accessible IPv4 addresses, but IPv6 um, is a much more common as far as having actual public allocation available. So having such a config where IPv4 is hidden away from anything external, but IPv6 is populated um, makes sense. And yeah, that's it for, for the network zone feature. I I hope this, this is going to be useful to some of you. It's definitely a bit of a, of a niche type feature again, um, because it's really, it's really targeted for those who do effectively some kind of, of public or semi-public type cloud using LexD, where you want your users to be able to create instances and all of those instances to automatically get valid DNS records, not just locally within the network, but also externally on the on the internet and you being able to actually handle all of that DNS through production grade DNS servers uh, instead of whatever DNS mask is doing locally. But yeah, hopefully there are a few of those um, for whom that's useful. If you have any questions about it, you can leave them down below in the comment section or on our community forum. We'll be happy to, to help you out and see you in the next one. Bye.